On the 20th of January 1942, a meeting was held in a suburb of Berlin, which came to be known as the Wannsee Conference. At this conference, there were 15 men present and they discussed how they were going to kill the Jewish population of Europe. In this video, I am going to just discuss what happened to the participants, but I would urge you also to maybe listen to my video on the Vance Conference and also uh, to read the protocol. So let's have a look at these participants. Well, SS Obergruppenführer Reinhard Heydrich, he was the main speaker and the chair of the conference. He was assassinated by the Czech resistance in June 1942. And this led to quite terrible consequences uh, within um, what is today Czechia. We'll have a look at that in uh, future videos. Adolf Eichmann, SS Obersturmbannführer. He kept the minutes and uh, made the protocol which we had today. That was okay with his work alongside Heydrich and Müller. He was he fled after World War II to Argentina. He was kidnapped there, taken to Israel, found guilty at a, a long trial and hanged. Josef Buhler was the state secretary in the office of the Governor General in Krakow. He was sentenced to death on the 10th of July 1948 by the Polish Supreme National Tribunal and hanged on the 21st of August 1948 in Krakow. SS Oberführer Karl Eberhard Schoengard. He was commander of the security police and the SD in the general government. He was sentenced to death by a British military tribunal for war crimes and executed on the 16th of May 1946 in Hamlin Prison. Georg Leibrandt worked for the Reich Ministry for the Occupied Eastern Territories. He was held in custody from 1945 to 1949. He was a witness in the ministry's trial where he stated that he did not share the madness of killing Jewish people. In January 1950, the Nuremberg Führer District Court opened an investigation against Leibrandt on suspicion of multiple murders. The investigation was terminated on the 10th of August 1950. No legal proceedings were initiated. In 1955, Leibrandt was an advisor to Konrad Adenauer in the repatriation of German prisoners of war from the Soviet Union. He later headed the Bonn office of steel producer Salzgitter AG. He lived near Stuttgart. He died in Bonn on the 16th of June 1982, aged 82. Alfred Mayer was a state secretary in the Reich Ministry of the Occupied Eastern Territories. He had attended uh, the Hitler's meeting of the 12th of December 1941 when Hitler said that he wanted to kill off all the Jews in Europe. Mayer committed suicide on the 11th of May 1945 when he accepted that the war was lost. His suicide is one of the first of those Nazis who sought to evade justice by taking their own lives. And what's unique about this is that he did it 19 days before Hitler committed suicide. Roland Freisler, State Secretary in the Reich Ministry of Justice, who was later President of the People's Court, which uh, made him uh, particularly famous. He was killed in an air raid on Berlin in February 1945. Otto Hoffmann, who headed the Race and Settlement main office of the SS, was sentenced in March 1948 to 25 years in prison for crimes against humanity and war crimes. On the 7th of April 1954, he was pardoned and released from Landsberg prison. He got a job as a commercial clerk. 
He died on the 31st of December 1982 in Bad Mergentheim, aged 86. Gerhard Klopfer, Ministerial Director in the Party Chancellery and Head of the Constitutional Law Department, was arrested on the 1st of March 1946. He appeared at the Ministry's trial as a witness. Klopfer claimed that he could not remember the exact content of the meeting at the Wannsee Conference stating that he always assumed that the Jews should only be resettled and that in 1935 he had been assigned to the party office against his will. In his denazification proceedings, he received a fine and a three-year probationary period during which he was not allowed to take up any responsible professional activity. From 1952, he worked as an assistant in tax matters and from 1956 as a lawyer in Ulm. A preliminary investigation by the Ulm public prosecutor was discontinued in 1962. He died in Ulm on the 29th of January 1987, aged 81. Now, I'd just like to return to what he said, is that uh, he couldn't quite remember the details of the meeting. So, would you want somebody handling your tax matters or being your lawyer who cannot remember the details of a conference, which was probably the only time in his life where he'd been involved in planning the murder of millions of people? I think his excuse is somewhat weak. Friedrich Wilhelm Kritzinger, Ministerial Director in the Reich Chancellery. He was arrested on the 23rd of May 1945. He was questioned several times and admitted to his participation in the Vance Conference and confirmed its criminal nature. He also declared that he was ashamed of German politics during the war and agreed that Hitler and Himmler were mass murderers. Kritzinger was released from prison in April 1946, but was in prison again in December of that year. He was released again for health reasons and died a short time later, aged 57, on the 25th of April 1947. SS Sturmbannführer Rudolf Lange, commander of the security police and the Sicherheitsdienst for Latvia, who was at the conference representing his commander, Walter Stalaker, was wounded during the battle for Poznan and committed suicide there on the 23rd of February 1945, aged 34. Martin Luther, who was Under Secretary of State in the Foreign Office, he was arrested on the 10th of February 1943 and interrogated by the Gestapo. SS group leader Heinrich Müller who had also been present at the Vance conference, was one of those who interrogated him. Luther was imprisoned in the Sachsenhausen concentration camp, but he received preferential treatment as a prominent prisoner. Hitler personally decided in 1944 that Martin Luther will live in a house on the edge of the concentration camp with his wife. On the 13th of May 1945, he died in Berlin, aged 49, due to the consequences of a heart attack. Heinrich Müller was head of the Gestapo. He was last seen on the 1st of May 1945. He stated to Hitler's pilot, Hans Bauer, that he had no intention of being taken prisoner by the Soviets. He then disappeared. In all probability, he was killed or committed suicide in Berlin, aged 45, although for many years later, there were all sorts of sightings of him, as there were, of course, of Martin Bormann. Eric Neumann was State Secretary in the office of the four-year plan, so it's somebody working for Goering. He was arrested at the end of the war. He was released in early 1948 due to illness and he died in Garmisch-Partenkirchen 
on the 23rd of March 1951, aged 58. He was a career civil servant who joined the Nazi party only after the seizure of power and clearly he did it only for his career. Wilhelm Stuckart was a state secretary in the Reich Ministry of the Interior. He was arrested and was defendant in the ministry's trial. He was accused of having drawn up anti-Jewish legislation. He was sentenced to time served in April 1949. He got various jobs in government administration in 1951. He was tried in a denazification court and classified as a fellow traveller to Mietlaufer. For this, he got a 500 mark fine. Stuckart was killed on the 15th of November 1953 near Hanover, West Germany, in a car accident one day before his 51st birthday. Although there was naturally suspicion that his death may not have been an accident, no proof to the contrary was ever found, nor did anyone ever claim responsibility. I hope you found that interesting. I am um, particularly interested in the fate of people after World War II and in videos I do of this nature. I shall try always to do as much as I can on this subject. I upload every Friday at 8 my time in Central Europe, 7 in the UK, 11 in the morning in Los Angeles. And uh, if you want, you could uh, you can subscribe and then you'll know when the premieres take place. And uh, it's not just on the Friday. Sometimes I upload at other times as well. But the Friday is the minimum. There will be always a video at that time on a Friday and sometimes at other times as well. Thanks for listening.